This episode is sponsored by Appian, a technology leader in driving digital first insurance transformation. With Appian's low code automation platform, you can build enterprise apps and workflows rapidly in an agile environment. This episode is sponsored by Exactuals, perfecting insurance payments and the data driving them. So I'll tell you what, the best way to warm up is tell me about that blue line that goes through, I don't know, the picture behind you and the wall. Uh, Whose idea was it? So actually it was my idea in a very um, inspirational day when I started creating different paintings like these. Uh, just out of the curiosity, what can go out of it? And eventually, after buying this house, I also wanted to have my trademark and, you know, my to prove my possession on the real estate by painting on the wall. So actually, yeah, the, the, the idea behind getting the line from the picture to the wall is, um, you know, just a proof of possession, if you'd like. So that's the reason for that. But uh, so yeah, it's not, there is very much doing that. That's the, that's the reason. That's the main reason. No, I love that because it's, you know, breaking the frame or stepping outside of the frame. Now, you do a lot of Zoom interactions. You've been running a FinTech Aviv, which is an association. You also have a conference. Is it in the same name or under a different brand? Yeah, FinTech Aviv, the Israeli FinTech Association is our conference line, events line, and it's mm -hmm. operated and held by Equitech Group. Equitech is a fintech consultancy, uh, holding the Israeli Fintech Association, managing it. So I'm doing it for the last seven years. And yeah, as you said, in the last year and three, four months, everything went digital. So now we're hosting yes. all our events digitally and, you know, everything went totally virtual. So uh, so we're definitely leveraging the capabilities of these kind of platforms in order in order to execute these kind of tasks. How long have you been doing these conferences? Are these conferences or what's the deal there? So um, I used to work for Ernest & Young for a few years uh, by training mm -hmm. and education. I'm CPA, studied law and business. And I also did my MBA here in Israel. Um, but yeah, you know, Ever since, I think it was 2014 when I decided that it's this is not for me. Not auditing, not working for a, a huge consultancy. Um, you know, it, it just wasn't for me. Even though you know, I, I, I like very much like my environment and the people working there uh, and different tasks. I, I'm, I'm, I've been I've been doing there. Yeah, that, that was nice, but uh, the essence of the work wasn't for me. So I decided to establish uh, the Israeli fintech association. Uh, and the consultancy, Equitech, FinTech consultancy. And so Equitech is um, um, basically a FinTech boutique firm. We help different financial institutions from one hand to, to scout for FinTech solutions, for innovation, for their operations. And from uh, the other hand, we uh, help different FinTech startups uh, in the ecosystem in Israel to reach out to different markets and uh, to mm -hmm. find and onboard their new partners and clients. So I've been doing that for the last seven years, since 2014. So it's you, uh, Sharon, Tal Sharon, what is, uh, yes, Tal Sharon. Exactly. exactly, Tal Sharon is my partner, partner in crime mm -hmm. uh, for, for, that, uh, for these, basically for these two operations. Uh, we run them together um, and uh, this is a fantastic road we've been uh, doing together. By the way, we studied together uh, the College of Management in Israel. And we also work together in EY. And um, I, um, you know, I uh, left my position there uh, a bit before him, started everything. Uh, we initiated the company and uh, he joined me. Um, it wasn't long after I started everything. And uh, he did his uh, internship in law. And then he joined me when he saw that the potential is huge. We saw a really huge potential, a blue ocean, untapped. A market of fintech companies looking for clients, fintech companies looking for investments, uh, fintech companies looking for themselves and their go-to-market model and strategy. Uh, so we leverage that to our uh, existing are operation. You, are you investing or just helping to get the investments? 
So currently we're investor bankers. Yeah, we're helping different companies to receive funds, oh. uh, to receive funds. But we are also raising our own fund, Equity Ventures, and over there we mm-hmm. intend to invest in A and B round startups. And so, um, of course, in the fintech field. Uh, so, uh, by the way, when I say fintech, I mean fintech in a very broad term of the word. So it can be. Oh, I was going for there, you know. We, yeah, we, we will talk about that because people is like, hey, just a second, Gilad, you're like this insurtech person. You're into how, what fintech for God's sake? And you just had another guy with like, you know, fintech uh, TLV and there is TLV Ventures. All that TLV and Aviv and it's like, it's starting to be confusing. And now I'm throwing in fintech into the story. So yeah, please tell us the story of your definition of or how do we connect the fintech and insurtech? Yeah, so um, I'm talking about fintech in the very broad term of the word. Um, we're working with a bunch of companies, close to 800 companies in our network currently in Israel. Uh, these companies are from different sub-segments of fintech. So when we say fintech, we include their insurtech as well, of course. Uh, blockchain-based solutions for the financial industry, serving the financial industry, and different uh, capital market solutions. Uh, it can be um, different trading platforms, and it can be cybersecurity solutions for the financial industry, uh, authentication, anti-fraud, identity management, identity theft, etc. Um, and it can be even backend solutions for the financial industry. If it's big data, AI solutions, and machine learning-based solutions uh, in the server in the server of the financial industry. Um, now there are new um, definitions and new sub-verticals going out and introduced to the world every day or almost every day, I would say. There's prop tech now, property technologies. And yeah, it involves FinTech. Of course, it involves FinTech as long as money goes through the systems and as long as it, uh, uh, it helps different investors to fulfill their, uh, their aspirations. Um, so we're dealing with compliance, reg tech, regulation technologies, and all kinds of sub-segments that are constantly changing. So this is an expanding definition, uh, and we're working closely with different companies in our community. So can you share with us an example of how you work with those companies? Especially when you have all these, I I love those all sub, uh, let's call it sub-sections, especially now I'm more looking into the reg tech and prop tech, because they, they work and mesh so well with insure tech, insurance companies, no matter what, they love real estate, right? It's not just in terms of the assets that, you know, they uh, cover and insure, but also in terms of their investments. Most of their, you know, investments are somewhere within real estate. So they need to think about those assets as well. But sorry, I'm digressing here. Let's take, let's talk about you and how you work with those companies and open up to the different subsectors. Sure. So, you know, we provide different consultancy services for these fintech companies. So it can be a go-to-market strategy, working with them on product market fit, on compliance aspects, you know, fintech and insurtech. These are, these are highly regulated markets. Before penetrating in new markets, before uh, and going to market, um, you just need to modify your product accordingly. So product validation processes, market validation processes, any consultancy, research analysis we can provide these companies we definitely make sure to cover these topics before penetrating new markets so this whole you know assess yourself and make sure that you're ready to penetrate new market this whole approach of investigating further probably from my origins from ey that's something that we truly believe in this is something that we um, carefully adopt as a process before reaching out to new markets then we help them to reach out and to get to know to know, get to know new partners in these markets. Uh, so this is facilitating different meetings, different uh, meetings with, with potential customers, clients, uh, different uh, meetings with different uh, potential investors, for example. Um, so, you know, that's our help. Mm-hmm. We can help these companies to raise funds, to onboard new clients, or to base their strategy. Uh, but uh, there are also the FinTech Aviv operations, the conferences line, that we can help these companies with, either if it's um, giving them the stage to express themselves and to showcase their solutions, either if it's uh, hosting them for different um, in different 
global summits and conferences uh, on stage there for them to showcase the Israeli fintech innovation. Uh, we do it quite often, by the way, pre-COVID days, we used to visit many uh, regions and um, to uh, have you know, outgoing delegations together with us, three, four startups uh, exhibiting on stage and uh, just to demonstrate the capabilities of the Israeli fintech and insurtech industry in different occasions. Uh, so this was great and truly um, a very efficient process of exposing these companies uh, to potential customers. Uh, and, and investors. And nowadays it's all done virtually. So I'm doing it from my home or from back in the office. Uh, but, you know, we save a lot of costs and time uh, for not needing to fly anymore. With that, uh, you know, we do miss the personal touch. Yes, uh, most definitely. So, you know, in person events are, yeah, in person events are, are almost back in Israel because in Israel it's, it feels like everything or almost everything is behind us. No masks anymore. Um, and I think almost 80% of the population is currently um, vaccinated. After, after the vaccine. Uh, vaccinated after the second mm-hmm. vaccine. So that's actually a great topic because so you've been running those conferences, sending delegation, bringing in delegation from Europe, uh, you're sending a Israeli delegation to the different countries. I saw I quickly went over, you know, the different conferences or uh, events, local events that you produced over the years. If it's in uh, Kiev, uh, Sofia in Bulgaria, uh, Germany, France and other locations, which is a very you know, a very nice and spread, especially within Europe. How does it work? Are you planning already face-to-face or in-person um, events in the near future? Actually, yes, of course, we have our limitations. Um, with that, uh, we can host events. Actually, we're hosting our first in-person event after the uh, COVID situation on the upcoming Thursday. Oh, congratulations. disruptive lending mm-hmm. event. Um, <laughs> thanks. But really, after I think last one was February uh, 2020. So it's a year and four months uh, to be precise. And yeah, this is exciting. This, this is exciting. And uh, we're looking forward to see our community members in person as we used to uh, in the old days, in the good old days. Uh, so yeah, we're getting back to that. And that's great. You know, there's no, it's, there's no replacement to real handshaking and you know talking and grabbing a drink with a colleague and talking about not just about professional yep. topics also about life and how's it going and how things are going and and how people recovered from the COVID-19 situation how businesses recovered from the COVID-19 situation how people recovered from the, the unpleasant situation we had in Israel with uh, our neighbors from the south uh, and uh, obviously there are a lot of topics to discuss. So this is a very good opportunity for us. Well, we are recording this at the beginning of June. So hopefully by the time that this air, you will be uh, after your event and it will be very interesting to, uh, to learn, you know, how people react to that. So the ex- everyone is excited to have that. I'm just, I'm just curious, how, how do you measure the excitement? More tickets than in the past. What do people ask for the you know proof of vaccines? How what's the vibe? So yeah, feedback is great. People are excited out of it. We see that in the registration form. Um, yeah, we have more people that we can hold in the place. So of course we're going to broadcast the event uh, afterwards, uh, so uh, everybody will be able to see it and to catch up with the content. We have great speakers, mm-hmm. so I think you know it also uh, contributes to uh, the fact that people actually want to want to get there and want to be part of it. Um, but it's not just that we, we we see the the fact that people actually tell us, guys, we missed seeing people, we missed the personal touch, we miss interacting with people. Uh, I, I think this is the greatest thing of all, and that's what build the community. I think that this is the secret sauce that ties community member one to each other. You know how they say that as a, as a Jewish guy in, um, uh, in a different country, let's say, maybe you connect to it, maybe not, but I, I know many people that went on Saturday to the synagogue just to meet people 
because you build the trust element. Even though if you're not an, a Jewish Orthodox, if you go there and you meet the same people every Saturday, so you gain trust with these people, you create this uh, friendship, this friendship relationship. And, you know, when you start doing business together, you trust that this person won't, won't fail to deliver because you're going to see him once again on next Saturday in the synagogue as you did so far. So you gain, you really build the trust relationship with him. I think it's the same. So basically, yeah, so basically what you're saying is that familiarity by repetition, going to the to different conferences, seeing the same faces over and over again, builds that baseline for some sort of familiarity and trust, a, a trust layer that later on you can build your relationship and of course doing business. And if later on, you, you know, you shake your hand, you go, you have a beer, dinner, talk about life, that trust becomes so, a crucial element for developing business and doing something together. Exactly. Um, you know, in the last seven years of our operations, we hosted more than 80 FinTech events. Uh, you keep seeing the same people. Our community grew and really, I think it's one of the fastest growing communities in the world. We currently have in our network 35,000 members probably. And we started with 20 people in the bar uh, for a small meetup event. Um, but, mm -hmm. but you see how things are growing and uh, getting their uh, spin to, to the right direction, basically, uh, to a very positive direction when people know each other uh, in different circles, of course, but in bigger circles. Uh, and yeah, people vouch to each other, people help each other. We, we see different clients and suppliers relationship. We see different contribution of the academy. We see different relationships. Uh, of consultants. Uh, we're working closely with Deloitte, for example. We're working closely with uh, Hassan's law firm, with Shibolet law firm, with AWS. We see everyone's contribution to the community. And, you know, these community members are enjoying different benefits and a bunch of uh, added values they couldn't have without being part of our community. So, you know, we're really humble to do that. And the fact that we are able to provide these kind of values to our community members and get everyone together every five or six weeks on average. And that's, that's uh, really, um, you know, a gift. We, we actually are very much enjoying doing that. And, uh, we feel, um, uh, and we feel very proud to do that. So can we, can you give me a better example or a story about the Inshotech side of it? And if you and if you can name names, that will be even better. Yeah, I'll, I'll give you the story of our combined efforts with Fintech Aviv as a event line, as the Israeli Fintech Association, along with Equitech as a Fintech consultancy. Actually, one of the most interesting case studies we had, um, I think it was back in 2016, when we introduced, or 17 maybe, when we introduced one of the companies in our network to Barclays Accelerator, to Techstars. And, you know, that was a, a very interesting side effect of one of our events. So the company was speaking in our events, the CEO of the company was speaking in our event, introducing this um, great program of taking care of our pension funds. So you know how it is when you don't really know where your pen, where where your pension is managed. Mm -hmm. uh, what kind of yeah? What what kind of route did you take with your pension? Is it uh, uh, just the general uh, path, or are you investing in stocks and you don't know that? Maybe it's the S and P, something that duplicates the S and P success. You don't really know what your pension fund does. And this company um, basically offered to you and me, to each and every one of us to be able to take their pension funds and in the push of a button, just transfer it to a different supplier and manage, manage your funds with the easy, easiness of your mobile phone when you see everything in the dashboard uh, in a super intuitive way. Uh, and this, is, this was really a great solution that they provided. And we wanted to introduce them to our community because obviously we wanted that our community members will benefit out of it. But in a panel discussion, right after this company presented, 
uh, one of the managers of Barclays in Israel, um, uh, they, they were speaking about uh, different insure tech solutions in a panel discussion in the same event. Um, and when they saw the company, they actually told us, listen, we got to get connected with these guys. We want to invest in them. We want to take them under Techstars uh, um, acceleration program. So we matched uh, between these guys. Obviously, the company had a tremendous success. Uh, they've been, they, they were graduated, they graduated the accelerator cycle uh, mm -hmm. of Techstars and started working with Barclays as a bank. Uh, so basically, we um, helped them to secure their first client, first investment, first acceleration program. And the company recently, they got a grant from the Innovation Authority in Israel of 9 million shekels, uh, which was a huge success for them. They're really uh, promoting their uh, um, product currently around the globe. And this is a very interesting success story with an insurtech company. Yeah. Maybe I missed. So, you know, there there are many. Others, by the way. Maybe I missed that. Uh, yeah, what was ahead. the name of the company? So let's not disclose the name of the company. Okay. I'm not sure that they really want to do that. Um, but um, uh, it's one it's one of the most interesting companies uh, that I, I know in this industry. No worries. I think it's you know it's just I think I signed up on some papers just avoiding me from mentioning the name of the company, but I think if you dig deep, <laughs> you'll probably find it. <laughs> yeah. No ways. I think that that's in my line of job. I think that's one of the biggest things that I have so many different NDAs. And with that, it's super careful to be conscious of the names and the examples, especially who, who am I talking with now and what are their connections and, is there some sort of a conflict of interest that we must avoid? As the man that sits in the middle of this junction, you know, as the chairman of the Israeli Fintech Association, I'm getting all the time these requests and inquiries from people to receive information on a bunch of stuff. You won't believe what kind of emails and, and LinkedIn messages I get. And, you know... No, oh, please tell me. <laughs> Interesting. Uh, different ways to move crypto from one place to another. Different requests to meet companies that will help with, you know, to to go, you know, and and do some ridiculous stuff with, uh, uh, you know, with with investments, with um, AML and regulations. You know, I'm exposed to a bunch of stuff that I really can do nothing with. So you know, I'm. Uh, we're, we're living in a legitimate world, in a legitimate business. We always recommend on the, uh, on the highway, right, on the right path to do stuff. Uh, but I'm receiving all kinds of requests, and you always need to be super aware to what you can and can't disclose. I mean, really, we're serving currently in our consultancy more than 120 different fintech startups. I guess almost 130 fintech startups. And we're signed a bunch of NDAs, a bunch of agreements, um, the Israeli Fintech Association is signed on different MOUs and, uh, you know, different, uh, um, basically, agreements that holding us from disclosing everything um, that's going on underneath the surface. But obviously, I'm happy to share whatever I can. What is the importance of the investment bankers to startups because startups think about it in something that will come later, later, later on. But in reality, you need to show up immediately after Series A. Even before. I would say sooner is better. Even before. Even before. Also, a pre-seed startup can uh, enjoy your services. And, you know, I wouldn't say ideation stage. You know, we can work on different uh, product validation processes and design the product together with a venture. With that, on the investment banking aspects, uh, I have to say that uh, we truly help entrepreneurs to get the best deals they can get out of the current situation. So if it's, you are, let's say, a round A company and you wanna raise funds, right? You wanna raise capital. So you can go and have a private placement. You can go to a shell deal. You can go to an IPO. 
uh, maybe further along the way, but you know, you can plan your IPO after your round D, E, F, and now you can also get into SPAC. There's so many ways to fund your ventures, but if you want certainty in the process, if you want validity, if you want to get the best deal you can, if you, got, if you want to get your uh, anti-dilution uh, terms with the investors, if you really want to determine your, uh, your valuation in a way that you can prove it and in a way that you can uh, have an argument with a sophisticated investor, so you should definitely approach us before you're going to this kind of process. We make sure to introduce you to the right investor according to the process we modify. We make sure to make you ready to prepare the company to this kind of deal. And make you ready is not just, you know, pimp my pitch. It's not that at all. It's not just the storytelling behind it. It's the materials. It's how you look. It's how you talk. It's the approach. It's the state of mind before raising funds. It's how you present yourself out there and not just the elevator pitch that needs to be shaped. Uh, so we help these companies with all this package and build the perfect invest investment deck for that. And then we go facilitate the meetings, the follow-up uh, interactions as well. We make sure they get the, the best deal uh, we can uh, get out of the, a specific situation. And now I have to say that the SPAC phenomena is out there uh, so we can e even see better and greater deals than we saw before. Because, as you probably know, now valuations are getting even higher. And now you can have even a bigger certainty. It, it can be, you know, people, people will say it's a ridiculous valuation, right? But, hey, that's, that's how SPAC works. It's not a DCF. Uh, it, it's not something that you, you know... The, the methodology to come up with the valuation is not based on what you did before, as we used to do in private placement. It's based on what you're going to do in the future, what you're intending to deliver. So now it's different because now you can talk about your vision, about your dreams, and valuations are getting much, uh, um, um, much bigger, thanks to that fact. Uh, that's spec became such a powerful tool. Uh, I was just in New York. That was my first business trip since this thing. So going back on a plane, I would say that the flight itself was okay. Uh, going through, you know, the airport and later on from the airport dealing with Uber and here in LAX, it's such a mess. You need to take a shuttle to the Uber area and the taxi area and all that, it's like, okay, COVID is done, no more distance. While New York itself was, it felt that, I, I, I would imagine that it's like Israel. There are people walking without masks, a few masks. Most of them are vaccinated. You finally have the dining approval, although nowadays, and again, it's we are recording this at the beginning of June, the weather is amazing. So dining outside in New York, it's super nice. Soon enough, it's going to be, humid as hell so i would not uh, after living five years in uh, manhattan i can tell you it's not that fun but I the point is know. one of the <laughs> but beside all the travel which was great finally to be you know up in the air and traveling and meeting people face to face one of my business meetings was again with a, a spec investor they i think that they created now a vehicle of about 300 million that they are looking for the right merge so they can provide the right mm -hmm. value and later on it's like okay great what is your ambition now sometimes i'm asking myself 300 is that enough you know what is the spec that if we are going and looking into insurance companies hippo they've done a, a great job would the 300 be enough for them for the next valuation, enough liquidity mm -hmm. for what they need? What are the different conditions yeah, so right. they can have, you know, the liberty to execute based on their plan? And we know they, they've done, they, Asaf one will need to write a book of how to build that because they took a traditional product and just made it better. And all the ecosystem around that home insurance just, done fantastic mm -hmm. job mm -hmm. but that yeah, was me talking a lot 
Sorry, no, not at all. I, I, first of all, I fully agree. The spat phenomena has turned things, you know, to the, to to a different direction. We saw it as well, and uh, you know, just to um, reply on, on two anecdotes you just mentioned. First of all, we saw that uh, since the demand is so high from different investors all around the globe to invest in fintech companies in a SPAC process, we ourselves, as a consultancy company, as a fintech consultancy, we established. A new service, SPAC is a service, investors approaching us to find their target company within the Israeli ecosystem. And we help them find their target company according to the valuation they define themselves. As you say, it can be $300 million or more than that. So that's one notion on that. And, you know, if we're talking about InsurTech, it was really surprising to see during, during the COVID-19 uh, period, I'd say mid-2020, we started seeing different insurance policies uh, issued by insurtech companies that we didn't see before. Uh, we saw life insurance policies that were more complicated, that were uh, protecting different households or different individuals from this kind of diseases. We saw cyber insurance on the rise, different policies of cyber insurance because all the cyber, uh, all the threats went in, in cyber basically because no one got out of, the, out, out of this house. We saw pet insurance on the rise. We saw UBI, user-based insurance, offered by different uh, car insurance companies. Uh, so, you know, don't drive, don't pay, etc. because, again, no one leaves his house. So I, I think that on this aspect, we also saw many insure tech companies uh, that went through the uh, SPAC rails. And I think we'll keep on seeing that during 2021. Uh, we saw already Payoneer. Um, payments, not insurtech, but we saw already Pioneer and we saw eToro announcement uh, on this as well. And we heard about Pagaya, about Hypo, and about uh, uh, different players going that direction as well. So, you know, uh, I, I think that this is a tool that is going to stay here for a while. Last question the question that I ask everyone that comes on the show. Please give me a recommendation, not to me, actually, to the audience. A recommendation of a life hack, a book, a TV show, whatever that may be, that you acquired during lockdown and actually eh, the time of this pandemic. Um, so, you know, I, I'm a crypto fan. Um, uh, you know, mm -hmm. talking about tutorials and stuff like this, I very much enjoyed um, just watching Binance Academy tutorials. Uh, and okay. this was very educating the NFTs world is exploding currently uh, this is a whole new game um, NFTs is one thing Dogecoin is another thing just buying your Bitcoin <laughs> is something that I think everybody should know how to uh, uh, to execute a, a, a simple Bitcoin deal uh, and secure his crypto future I would say uh, so I very much enjoyed uh, seeing uh, Binance Academy, but this is on the fintech space because we're talking about fintech and insurtech, but uh, uh, that's me. We can talk about books, movies, you know, Netflix was working extra hours. Hey, it's, <laughs> it's up to you. Yeah. It's up to you. I, there are people who, you know, it's all about their lifestyle. The other people about a list of books that open their mind or just give them a pleasure for, I don't know, 18 hours. Really depends on what you like, and it's again, it's like so many different things. But again, Nir, thank you very much for joining me today. It's been a pleasure talking to you from what you guys are doing in Israel, in Tel Aviv, uh, working with fintech companies, in shorter companies. And of course, don't forget, go into crypto. And by the way, not a financial advice, right? <laughs> this is financial just entertainment. Gila, thank you very much for having me. It's been a pleasure. And uh, I'm looking forward uh, to hosting you in Israel. Um, let me know when you are uh, jumping on a plane to Tel Aviv.